I'll let you proceed. You're representing um, the applicant for the TRO, so you may go ahead. Yes, ma'am. And, and it's set forth in our affidavit, um, which, you know, it being a temporary restraining order is how the court will proceed based on an affidavit. Um, but the affidavit outlines, you know, clear danger to the child, uh, bruises on the child, uh, evidence that uh, we believe will be obviously flushed out at a temporary orders hearing, but evidence that the bruises are caused by mom hitting the child, drug usage, um, and most importantly, Child Protective Services uh, placing the child with my client um, in mom signing a safety plan uh, with Child Protective Services. Since now safety plan, the reason why we're here, safety plans are only voluntary, right? There's nothing requiring mom to um, follow the safety plan. There's not a court order in place. Um, and I think the um, I think the evidence would be at a hearing that mom recently told dad she's going to come pick up the child uh, in spite of the safety plan um, in place. So that's the uh, we want to set a hearing, obviously, so mom can present evidence if she's going to deny that she caused the bruises, despite the evidence that we think that we're going to have. Obviously, there can be a full hearing on that. Um, but for now, I think all the evidence that the court has in front of it per the affidavit is that the child would be in danger in mom's care. Child Protective Services has placed the child with my client, and we need a court order to ensure that the child's not removed um, from my client until there's a hearing. Okay. And Mr. Gilbreth, I know, um, I think you filed an amended petition, and the court has not had an opportunity to compare or to review the amended petition and compare it with the original one. So will you identify for me what the changes are, if any? Yes, yeah, so we were able to gather um, pictures before it's just the affidavit. Um, I'm not going to, unless the court wants me to, I'm not going to share a screen, but there are pictures of, for example, the child's buttocks with bruising on it, the child's face with bruising on it, pictures of drugs um, that uh, were referenced in the affidavit, and um, text messages um, between mom and the au pair, which mom, for example, says, grab my drugs. Okay, understood. All right, um, and Ms. Leimert, um, we'll go ahead and give you an opportunity to respond to the request and to what Mr. Gilbreth has set out. Uh, but let me I'm start just... by asking you to raise your right hand. Oh, sorry, I, I accidentally clicked something and I don't know how to get back into it. Uh, oh, um, I don't know how to get out of here. Sorry. <laughs> um. Can you see me? Yes, we can oh. still see you. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I need um, you to raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and respond to the allegations and um, that have been set out. Um. When all of this started, I, no one would tell me what the allegations were. No one would shed light on why my son was being taken away. Um, I didn't see the photos till after the fact. And um, so I didn't know that like what, what they were pertaining to. No one would tell me what was going on. And um, after my son got taken from me, I tried to seek co uh, lawyer help and um, figure out how to find CPS defense to um, reverse this. And then he said that if there, and then he enlightened me and said that, if, I, like I said, I didn't understand anything. So I was trying to get the, um, education. They said that he was saying that if you didn't get court mandated, you voluntarily give your kid away. And I said, no, I didn't. We thought I had to. And they said they were going to take my kid that night. And in that whole time frame, which I don't know if all of these people were working together but without my knowledge, um, Chris's girlfriend was coming to help stay with me because I had kicked my nanny out after I had um, found out that she, um, she had she was the one who had called CPS. Um, and but I didn't know that she had also called the cops. I did not have that knowledge, and, and the CPS would refuse to divulge anything, and I couldn't understand why that they were going to clear me on Tuesday, but then they convicted me on Friday or took my son on Friday. And I was, and then still would not tell me anything. And then 
um, the, the detective calls me to say, I say, come on in and explain your side. And I was like, okay, cause, um, I want to be cooperative and, and understand what's going on. And he also misled me and did not divulge that there were two investigations happening. And I thought he was trying to get my statement because the CPS wouldn't take it. I thought he was trying to get my statement so that I could continue on with the CPS case, CPS case so I could get my son back. Um, and the lawyers had that because, you know, I go, so I didn't have to get my son back. I mean, I didn't have to get my son away. Like, CPS, like, everyone kept telling me that CPS was just lying to me and saying, they were just saying all this stuff to, like, make you think that. And then the, the investigator kept saying, I don't know anything about the CPS. We have no connection, blah, blah. So it's like, again, I'm still in the, in the dark about everything. And then I go on a Sunday to see the photos, thought and thinking, I'm, like, clearing my name with him. Um, not knowing that I was under investigation and he, he was like, I have to read these rights, um, just out of semantics. And I was like, okay. Um, and then asking me these weird questions, like trying to get me to admit something that I didn't do. And, um, then later on, I, um, I, I called Chris. I was like, I like, did you like, we, we, I had, we, we thought we had to give you Luca. I don't, I didn't have to give you Luca. I'm going to get the green light, though. I, I called Detective Sanchez to re, re clarify what was happening, and I and I couldn't get a hold of him. And then I, I called the lawyer to, to retain him after I got the consolation. I, the 200, I go, okay, I would like to retain you. Then I couldn't get a hold of the lawyer. Um, then I finally got a hold of the detective, and he was like, um, just because you don't know anything doesn't mean, like, I did anything wrong. And I'm like, you manipulated the situation here. And, and I was in the dark the whole time. And then this morning, I, I find the email about temporary restraining order. I wasn't going to come get him without a green light from someone to say that I could go get my son back. And I now I understand that there's two investigations happening that I have to get cleared of and file all this stuff, and that, that's what I'm working towards. But I did not have any of that knowledge when I told Chris I was going to come get him. I'm just now finding everything out today. But in my text, I said I'm waiting for the green light to, to, for someone to tell me that I can go get my kid. And I did not get a confirmation. That I could do that legally. Okay, Mr.